the first place. So this will be, I, I hope, the equivalent to the previous. And since you watched the Open ACC, we can compare and contrast uh, Open MP to Open ACC here. Um, and feel free to, you know, answer, ask questions as we as we go along, or keep them to the end, and we'll have a, a question and answer session. Uh, okay, Open MP. So, Open MP has been around a, a long time. Uh, Here's the website openmp.org. Uh, it looks quite a bit like, uh, you know, the Open ACC for a reason. I mean, Open MP has been around for over 20 years, and it is the, you know, the designed to be the parallel programming uh, API, but. Back to our, our discussion on day one, uh, does that mean that if I have open MP code that I've been using on a CPU for the last 10 years, is that gonna perform well on the GPU? And the answer is uh, unfortunately no. Uh, the architectures are just so different that uh, things that you've been taking advantage of on the CPU just will not perform very well on the GPU. So one is that we have more levels of parallelism. So most of your OpenMP code that you have today has a single level, it's OMP parallel four or OMP parallel do. Um, the other is since the, as we talked about yesterday, since the CPUs have so much more capability, uh, people have gotten used to having pretty extensive amount of work under this compute function here. So, um, you know, there could be things in there like, you know, dynamic memory allocation, uh, you know, lots of stack usage, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Barriers, uh, OpenMP has, thread local storage or thread private data. I always get the two confused. One is an open MP thing and one is uh, more of a, a CPU thing. But, you know, it's got a fork join model. And what that means is that the threads are pretty much spawned at the beginning of the program in CPU open MP. And they kind of just kind of hang around and you, hit an open MP region and the threads fire up and do some work. And then you hit the barrier or the end of the region and they kind of just go to sleep and wait for the next amount of work to come up. So uh, CUDA and, and GPU programming is a lot different than that. The only thing that really stays around is your data in uh, the GPU memory. Other than that, the, the kernel grabs resources, computes, and then the results are stored, you know, back to the device memory and the threads go away. And the next kernel launch can use a completely different number of threads and, you know, can run on completely different hardware. So uh, what is the OpenMP solution? Uh, so the top part on the left is the OpenMP pragma syntax, uh, not really any different by design than OpenACC. Again, OpenACC, you know, borrowed lots of things from OpenMP. Uh, on the bottom left, though, are the things that you should be uh, uh, concerned with or studying or are the keys to GPU offload. Uh, so they've added some new constructs, target, teams, and distribute. So these are the major additions for GPU acceleration. So uh, what target does, and, and this is the one that you will always kind of include at the, in your data and compute uh, section. So that starts the offload. It maps the variables to the device 
and begins execution or is, you know, is a marker for the beginning execution of that construct on the device. It does not do any parallelism by itself. So they've added uh, another construct called teams and teams creates the teams for execution. So this is all pretty uh, hard fast. Uh, teams maps to open ACC gangs or maps to blocks in the grid in our implementation. And I think all open MP offload implementation. And then after teams distribute says work share uh, the work that's following amongst the teams that I've created. And then we're back to the original open MP uh, uh, directives parallel, uh, which has been around since the beginning. And in our implementation that creates the CUDA threads within the team. So that's the threads in a thread block. And then parallel do or for says uh, to work share that work below that among the threads uh, in the team. So on the right is the same picture I had in OpenACC. Uh, lots of applications have been written using OpenMP on the CPU and OpenACC on the GPU. And I think those same applications could still use OpenMP without target on the CPU and OpenMP with target on the GPU. I haven't seen it yet, but I, there's no reason that that can't happen. In that case, you know, this, this, uh, this diagram maybe is a little false in that probably with OpenMP on the CPU, there's probably more than 5% of the code that's running in parallel on the CPU using OpenMP would be my guess <clears throat> from my experiences with OpenMP on the CPU. So what's a programmer to do? So the first attempt might just be to insert target teams distribute where you already have open MP directive. So this is like the Laplace uh, code and we'll go through this example uh, quite a bit. Um, so before where I had Pragma OMP parallel four on the uh, outer I loop, I can just insert target teams distribute. And you know, it's not terrible. Uh, what we will do is uh, insert, uh, you know, a create a, a kernel for that and divide the outer loop among both teams and threads. So using M info, you'll get a, a message like, well, I've parallelized this across teams and threads. I use 128 threads and we're using a, a static schedule. So if this is, uh, you know, if, if your code has a bu whole bunch of one dimensional loops and that's how your code is structured, uh, you may be okay. Uh, the thing to worry about then is like we talked about before, do you have long sections of code under the OMP parallel and are you just gonna overwhelm the GPU with all the resources that you expect it to use? <clears throat> Uh, in this case, to get more parallelism and get coalesced accesses, you could break up the directive and use uh, parallel four on the inner loop. So uh, I think this is a, a thing that uh, a lot of people have tried and, and probably works pretty well on multiple compilers. So on the outer loop, I distribute that across the gangs using target teams distribute. And on the inner loop, I distribute that across the threads in a gang uh, using OMP parallel four. So this gives a pretty good performance, actually, you know, almost as good as it gets. What we've done now is since C the rightmost is the leading dimension. Now I have the leading dimension in the in the thread, you know, open ACC vector or the, you know, the thread block. Uh, dimension, I get coalesced accesses reading from A and writing to A new. 
and this performs pretty well. So we generate the reduction and you'll see uh, M info messages like this that, you know, loop 66 is across teams. Uh, loop 69 is a parallel loop and that's parallelized across threads. So you're running on the GPU and it's great. Uh, unfortunately, this is not what you want to do on the CPU. So what we've done here with this example is we've kind of crippled the, the CPU performance because we've moved the parallelism on the CPU to the innermost loop. So we're creating, you know, doing this fork join uh, operation for every innermost uh, loop uh, J equals one to S size minus one. So when you compile this for the, the CPU using our compiler, and I think most compilers, uh, you'll see that the, the outermost loop is across teams. And I believe, well, I know for sure our compiler only creates one CPU team. And I believe most compilers only generate one CPU team. And the reason we can't do anything else there is the OpenMP spec, as far as I understand, uh, does not allow barriers or uh, uh, things like the single construct or, or things like that across the target teams dimension. Uh, all the existing CPU code out there uses those types of of things on the parallel four dimension, and that's where barriers can occur. So, uh, so we're really sort of stuck here as far as as how to create a portable uh, schedule for this uh, nested loop that works on well on both CPU and GPU. <clears throat> so there have been you know, lots of papers and, and proposed solutions to this over the years. Uh, in fact, there was a paper, pretty uh, popular one a couple of years ago that just said, oh, just use uh, uh, preprocessor directives. <laughs> and uh, so one thing that they have supported or added to the OpenMP spec is this notion of a meta directive. And I, I'm struggling with this a little bit myself. We don't really have this working in a released compiler yet. We have something that I think works correctly that we're gonna have in our next release, 22.2. But with a meta directive, you will be able to uh, have a directive based on different targets. So here the syntax is when the target device is, a, is of kind GPU, use target teams distribute, you know, reduction. When it is not kind GPU or the default use parallel four with a reduction. And inner, you can just say, if it's, if it's GPU add parallel four, otherwise don't do anything. And then if you compile with MP equals GPU, you get what you want. If you compile with MP equals multi-core, you get what you want. <clears throat> So uh, this is an okay solution. I think people will use this. I believe there are ways that you can put the meta directive inside of another you know, high level macro maybe in an include file and then kind of clean up the syntax and not have to um, duplicate that with, with every single kernel. Uh, I'm struggling a little bit because this is not really out in the wild yet, so uh, I don't have a lot of experience with this in our compiler. <laughs> when I use the dev, this worked for me. <clears throat> so we are also providing and putting on quite a bit of effort into another type of directive in OpenMP, and it's called the loop directive. So this is a, a more of a descriptive OpenMP uh, construct. So there's kind of religious wars between whether directives should be prescriptive or descriptive. And I don't really want to get into that too much, but 
descriptive gives the compiler a little bit more flexibility and you're just saying something about the code itself. And in OpenACC, the directives are considered descriptive and you're saying these loops are parallel, so do what you want. Prescriptive is, is more the OpenMP model, which says uh, break up the work this way on these loops. And I can't, I, I don't really want to get into it any more than that, but uh, our compiler has been around quite a while and, and we kind of and like and and hope that people use the more descriptive model that gives a little bit more flexibility to the compiler. And as part of NVIDIA now, we want the compiler to target our hardware in, in kind of a, the most effective way. So the, the form that this looks like now is Pragma OMP target teams loop. So you just basically specify loop and the compiler looks at the next loop and determines you know, how to schedule that onto the GPU. Alternatively, like below, this is almost like an open ACC uh, slide that I had. You can specify the OMP target teams, you know, begin and end, and then you can have open MP loop just inside of that. So we'll generate one parallel kernel and uh, and map that uh, hopefully very efficiently onto the GPU, giving the compiler a little bit of flexibility of of the teams and and uh, threads that it uses. So here, no need for meta directives or if def macros. Uh, it provides a target specific parallelism in the same executable. So the claim. And in actually the labs, you can probably try this for yourself. The claim is if you use OMP target teams loop on this loop, we will generate close to the most efficient code for both CPU and GPU in the, in the same file in one compilation. So uh, using our M info messages, you can see that you get the, you know, generating NVIDIA GPU code uh, using teams and threads. And when we generate multi-core code on the outer loop, we use the parallelized across the threads. Uh, because we've given the compiler the flexibility to schedule it you know, the right way for the different uh, hardware. There was something else I was gonna say with this. Now I can't remember. <clears throat> Maybe it'll come back. <clears throat> Find teams parallel thread pauses on OMP loops. So this is the uh, kind of the equivalent in OpenACC to being able to say, this is a gang loop, this is a worker loop, and this is a vector loop. Uh, you know, there's only uh, two levels of parallelism in OpenMP, teams in parallel. The teams, again, are across the thread box. Parallel is within the block across the threads. Bind thread is equivalent to OpenACC's loop SEQ. So that says, you know, each thread does, you know, the whole loop here. It's not work shared. Uh, similar to OpenACC, there is only an implicit barrier between bind parallel loops. So, uh, so you can have multiple. OMP loop bind parallels, you know, one after the other. And we will do on the GPU the appropriate sync operation so that the second loop can read the results generated by the loop preceding it, assuming that it's within the same team. Uh, if you use the target teams loop uh, construct, you can also uh, adjust the kernel launch parameters, similar to OpenACC, where we had num gangs and vector length. In OpenMP, it's 
num teams and thread limit. Uh, it's not just for OpenMP target teams. I believe you can also specify thread limit and num teams for, you know, target teams loop. Uh, I mean, target teams distribute as well. I think we will accept thread limit and num teams for almost all cases. There are some cases where we will not. I'm trying to remember what it is. I think it's if you just say OMP target without teams. <clears throat> In our experiences, uh, the compiler does a pretty good job. Uh, our OpenMP reduction uh, implementation, we have found times where we generate too many teams. And our reduction implementation currently in OpenMP uses atomic operations. And you may find limiting the number of teams gives better performance. So this is something actually you can also try in the, the lab exercise today. I think one version of the lab has atomic operations inside of it. <clears throat> the collapse clause uh, is the same as in OpenACC, probably by design. I think OpenACC just uh, followed what was in OpenMP. I think we talked about this before uh, in the OpenACC talk, exactly the same. <clears throat> Calling user routines and device code. So this is more complicated in OpenMP than in OpenACC, and we are working on this. So you can see the example I showed with OpenACC, where we had a routine SEQ, routine vector, routine gang, and you know you can call that. In OpenMP, you just use OMP declare target, and it's up to the compiler and the the runtime to kind of do the right thing and. Quite frankly, we're a little bit struggling <laughs> with that. And so uh, in this case, you know, we have subroutine FV on the right here with declare target and has a OMP parallel do. So this is called like an orphaned parallel uh, uh, operation. So, you know, it's orphaned to be in OpenMP sense because it's not within the original. Uh, uh, loop or the original kernel uh, begin begin kernel end kernel uh, block. So uh, here's the error that we give in 21.11. I believe in 22.2, our next compiler, we will handle this case. So we've been working hard on this kind of for orphaned parallel uh, operations. But uh, so there's work to be done there. Uh, it's uh, unfortunate, I think, that uh, OpenMP decided to not help out the compiler vendors a little bit more here. <clears throat> uh, reduction clauses, I think this is almost exactly the same. Uh, OpenACC borrowed heavily from OpenMP, and OpenMP didn't change. So. Uh, Again, the reduction can occur over all the teams in the kernel or within a team. The compiler will generate the proper code to collect that together. Uh, atomic operations. Uh, I haven't talked about atomic operations, but they are supported in both OpenACC and OpenMP. And these are you know, actually used quite a bit. Uh, they're kind of considered maybe a more advanced topic than for an, an introductory talk. But the atomic ensures that a specific storage location is accessed atomically, hence the name. So uh, this prevents race conditions. Uh, and uh, can you can actually implement reductions this way. Uh, a lot of times it's used for, you know, um, collecting things that are more like a vector scatter where you accumulate in a scattered manner. So you, it's the decomposition across threads and blocks is a little unclear. 
So that's here the J is a, kind of a runtime function or read from a, another array. So you don't know for sure if I'm updating things that could be updated you know, across the GPU on the other side. <clears throat> uh, hackathons have shown the need for double complex atomic updates. Uh, seems like it's, we've hit that in, well, Berkeley GW almost every time I mentor that team. Um, some other, you know, chemistry codes. Most purposes, it's okay. And our workaround is usually to do the real and imaginary parts separately because they're just doing atomic sums. And they nobody actually reads the result until the kernel is finished. The hardware itself does not have a, you know, two double uh, atomic update. <clears throat> so you have to break it up into two. So why, why do we encourage users to have a loop construct, the descriptive versus prescriptive argument? So our OpenMP loop uh, more directly leverages years of uh, our OpenACC scheduling, kernel generation. And OpenMP uh, inside Parallel 4 allows some things that we view as parallelism limiting. So like master directives, single barriers, et cetera, or OpenMP API calls. So lots of code that people are porting may call things like OMP get thread num or something like that. So when we generate OpenMP loops, we don't need to insert in any of this OpenMP runtime support into the generated kernels. And we do in the other cases, Sometimes we know that we don't have to, but when there are subroutine calls within your kernels, we aren't sure, right? Because we don't always have good visibility into the, the subroutines or functions that are called. <clears throat> what we've found though is, you know, the converse, the CUDA tool chain does a pretty good job of removing or at least minimizing the overhead that we have to insert uh, into the you know, the prescriptive OpenMP, but we haven't gained a lot of experience yet with complicated kernels. So whether that still holds up or not, uh, we're yet to see. So I, I think the jury is still out. I think you can do a lot of good work with the prescriptive model, uh, whether it's portable to all platforms or not is, is another question. We'll also have to wait and see on that. Um, so, um, you know, part of, I should say, part of the acceptance of our OpenMP compiler at NERSC is that the set of performance benchmarks are within 90% or more of OpenACC, and we've reached that. So, um, so it's, an, it's not like it's, it's terrible <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but again, we have not used you know, really complicated kernels for a lot of that. Hmm. I'm gonna quickly go through data regions. Uh, the reason I can quickly do it is because they are almost exactly the same in form and function to open ACC. So, I, you know, there's, a, there's differences in the compute constructs between open ACC and open MP. Uh, for the data regions, we share 99% of our runtime code for data management between OpenMP and OpenACC. Uh, so uh, you know, they're very similar. OMP target data can have uh, Teams loop within there. Uh, there are data clauses, again, similar to OpenACC. There are some additions. So there's a, you know, instead of copy in, copy out, there's map to from, to or from, instead of OpenACC create, there's map alloc. Uh, some of the additions are like always, map always to and map always from. So I laughed when I first saw this and we started playing around with it. I called them always slow. <laughs> so uh, if you find that you are, you know, really relying on map always to or map always from, uh, maybe you ought to step back and see if there's a way get away from that. So this will always update uh, the host or always update the device. 
Um, <clears throat> so we have the update clauses. If you occasionally need to do that, if you always need to do that, uh, you know, maybe that's not a good thing. Uh, there are unstructured data directives. Here's the basic example. Again, it's like one-to-one -one mapping between OpenACC and OpenMP, just different syntax, map to, map from. Uh, when you end an unstructured data region, you can delete it, just like OpenACC. There's an addition in OpenMP called release. Uh, OpenMP talks a little bit more about the reference counts. Uh, you know, it, it's actually implemented the same way in OpenACC and OpenMP. So the present table that I talked about earlier has reference counts for how many times, you know, the data has been referenced or kind of pushed onto the stack. And when you leave a, a data region, it just reduces the reference count. Uh, map release actually kind of exposes that to the user. And so they're able to just kind of, you know, subtract one from the reference count using that uh, uh, clause. <clears throat> uh, target update, uh, just again, exactly like OpenACC, just different syntax, OMP target update from, uh, again, you might need this before you use MPI send or something like that. <clears throat> Array shaping is, uh, again, the same between OpenACC and OpenMP. And here's the same slide just to show the uh, corresponding data directives between OpenACC and OpenMP. So you can, if you want to, use, you know, with our compiler, turn on both OpenMP and OpenACC. You can put, use all the data directives in OpenMP and all your compute constructs in OpenACC or vice versa. Uh, it, it will work either way. Uh, asynchronous behavior. So on the left, I have OpenACC from the example from this morning. We're still kind of ironing out uh, how it's going to work in OpenMP, but this, to my knowledge, is how it's going to work in our next release, 22.2. So it is a little different than OpenACC. OpenACC had queue numbers that map almost one to one between streams. Open a, open MP uses depend clauses. And what you put in a depend clause is really kind of a, just a marker. It's convenient to use a variable. And then you kind of use that same variable in depend clauses and map whether the dependency is in or out. And then, uh, and then also add a no wait clause for asynchronous behavior on that. So it's worth kind of going through this example on the right, because again, it's important that most applications call uh, CUDA libraries. Most CUDA libraries take streams and you want your work that you do in open a, open MP kernel to play nicely with the, the stream operations in your library. So here we're adding a call, maybe just in the last week, this became OMPX, get CUDA stream because it's non-standard OpenMP, I believe. But you, from the, device, from the default device, this will give me a stream number that in our runtime, the next set of no wait clauses will use. So it's kind of looking forward that says, if I call OMP get CUDA stream, it returns me the stream number that I can subsequently use. And then I can use that stream number, it's exposed actually the CUDA stream, to call QFFT set stream. So I'm you know, instructing the CUDA FFT library to use that stream. And then I can use the OpenMP depend clause on stream and no wait to put all this work using depend with end stream into the same stream, asynchronous stream. So this update two will use the end stream under the hood 
are QFFTs. We've specified those to use uh, N stream. The scale of C will use N stream. And then the target update, reading the result back, will use that CUDA stream. And then finally, I say OMP task wait. And that's where the synchronization will occur. And then the result is back on the CD. Um, so this will be our solution in 22.2. My understanding is in OpenMP 5.2, they've proposed another solution to kind of interact with CUDA streams, but we won't have that available in our compiler for a while. Uh, passing device pointers to CUDA libraries is very similar to uh, OpenACC and OpenMP. In OpenACC, remember, it was host data use device. In OpenMP, it's target data use device pointer. But otherwise, it works exactly the same way. Uh, Fortran array syntax in device code, it's not really uh, supported in our OpenMP compiler, unfortunately. There's a couple of ugly workarounds. You can say target teams loop and create a, a loop that goes from one to one, and we will uh, accept this array syntax here and kind of do the right thing. Or you can explicitly write out the, the array syntax here on the left, h colon equals zero, adding a loop. <clears throat> um, so we don't have a good solution for Fortran array syntax at the high level in uh, OpenMP yet. So this is my last slide. Uh, so I've mentioned a few times that uh, our OpenMP compiler is still sort of work in progress. And in our next release, 22.2, which will be out in February, these are the things we're working on. Uh, so OpenMP and OpenACC in the spec define array reductions. So that's a reduction, not just on a scalar, but on an array element or an entire array or a section of an array. And we've been working on that for a while. Uh, we actually implemented it in OpenMP first uh, and then moved our implementation to OpenACC. It's complicated and we're still working on it, but it should be in pretty good shape in 22. Uh, the target task, no wait, like the example I showed and how that maps to CUDA streams, uh, that should be pretty solid in 22.2. Uh, and as again, that's important for you know interoperability with uh, CUDA libraries. Support for orphan parallel, like the example I showed, a parallel loop in a user function called from a kernel, uh, that uh, should be working uh, in most cases in 22.2. Still working through uh, some of the meta, meta directive support issues. And we're always working on performance. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> try to get the, the commonly used uh, uh, constructs to work as well on our NVIDIA hardware as we possibly can is our goal. So I think that's a wrap. Uh, OpenACC and OpenMP.